Now then, here we are in Yorkshire, good old happy Yorkshire. And I'm out today doing a bit of bike packing for the night and I'm going to be testing a new tent. And this tent is absolutely brand new out from Fjell Raven and it's designed as a summer tent. And because today feels a little summerish, well, we could maybe say spring. We've got some daffodils out here and there and the sun keeps making an appearance. And if you can see, there's a tiny bit of blue sky and it has been a long time since we've had some good weather. So I am looking forward to just getting out, having a night to refresh my brain and take in some of this scenery. Absolutely epic already. Anyway, we are going to head up, find somewhere to camp out in the middle of nowhere and then hopefully just have a very relaxing night. Nothing extreme with the weather, although it did say that it might rain, so something to look forward to, eh? Look at that though, the daffodils. There we go, sun's out, shades on, life is sweet. Especially after having a nice pie at local butchers as well. Although I think that's going to sit a bit heavy on my belly when I start climbing up this next big hill. Ah dear, shibber eat. If you know where I am in the world, you'll know that this hill is an absolute bar stool. And that's on best of days on a light road bike. But when you get yourself on a gravel bike like this one with a load of heavy kit on, <laughs> it is gonna be tough. And it's one of them that just literally doesn't stop. I'll be crying by the top, I reckon especially having belly full of pie that will not help at all ah. anyway it's good training isn't it get some strength into those legs yeah i love it really and hills are definitely my thing they always have been since i was a kid brought up fell running so i always like pushing my lungs and pushing my legs he says ah. I promise I'm not stopping halfway up this hill for a break. I am stopping to show you Yorkshire. Take a look at that. What an absolutely fantastic place. And I am proud to be from here. It's always just the most kindest place to come and visit. Everybody says hello and even the sheep say hello. Hey up. Hello. Come on ladies, we spoke about this. No? 
<laughs> they'll let me down, they'll let me down. Well, that hill was an absolute pig and I've done it several times and I've actually smashed it as fast as I can trying to get the uh, king of the mountain on Strava to which I failed I think I got about third at the time and then since then the Tory Yorkshire's been through so from being third you sort of drop down to 203rd or whatever <laughs> straight away because those guys are next level anyway I'm off the road now and we are on to a rough track and being a rough track this is exactly why I've got hold of this gravel bike for exactly this sort of thing so I can actually do some longer adventures and not worry if I do have to go off road to find somewhere to pitch my tent yeah and so far it's absolutely awesome with this bike it is doing me well and it was a bargain as well Thank you very much my friend, thank you, there we go, that's Yorkshire for you, nice kind people and it's funny because when I, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to do this one handed here, when I went to London after I graduated from university I went and lived there for a couple of years or so and me being the kind Yorkshireman, always a smile on my face saying hello to everybody that I see I literally got looked at as if I was weird everyone down there is just miserable there's literally no happiness day to day there and I'd be uh, on the tube offering my seat to people same on the buses and people would be shocked literally shocked if you were offering a seat to someone and I'd end up always chatting to the old grannies who were saying you're not from round here are you? <laughs> I'm like nah, up north, my darling and uh, she said yeah you can tell said, you know it's been 10 years since someone's offered me a seat on a bus and it's just draining definitely not for me I mean yes I've got a lot of uh, life love for a place like this you know it's just fantastic and yeah there's not as many people as what you get crammed into a city but it's just strange that humans end up not being humans they're just living so close to each other but yet you don't actually seem to know anyone and you know you come somewhere like this literally don't meet anyone but when you do there's always that connection and that is what I love about Yorkshire it is just an awesome place it really is and look at it, just look how beautiful it is. Absolutely fantastic. But it's a grand air, just nice and peaceful. A little bit of a breeze, but that's about it. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not risking that one handed. I didn't bring my flippers with me. <laughs> there we go. Get my leg over. And we're off again.
I've just found a load of uh, massive rocks and they are actually quite beautiful. So if I can find a place just to pitch this tent somewhere, it might be kind of nice for the evening. This is cool. Look at this. This, eh? I'm glad I got my helmet on though, because these uh, cycling shoes are not the best for clambering about on rocks with. <laughs> oh. It doesn't look like there's anywhere to pitch a tent though. I could maybe squeeze it there. It'll be very tight. And not very flat. I'll keep searching. Not a bad place for a bivy camp though. Problem is with all this, it's just like moorland, so it's very damp, very wet. It holds the moisture like a sponge. There's a flat bit over there, but it does look a bit boggy. Well, it's not too bad. Definitely got some shelter from this. Look at that. It's almost like it's set in a cave. I could maybe make that work. Pretty awesome is this place. Whoa. But as you can see, there's no grass really. It is just moorland, heather everywhere. And we don't want to disturb any nesting birds because they'll probably get into that stage maybe where they might be actually thinking about nesting. Anyway, <laughs> it's just nice exploring, isn't it? It is nice to explore the world. Right, we have made a decision. We're gonna pitch the tent just there. That's me, you and bike. It's absolutely perfectly flat. We've just got a bit of a muddy section there which shows there is a bit of water around. And obviously all these reeds as well just means that it's generally quite a moist area. But currently it is nice and dry. So let's get this helmet off. I'll show you my helmet hair. <laughs> Looking good. And uh, I'll take my gloves off as well. These are my Fox gloves from probably about the year 2000. So they've been going strong for a long time and it, they actually go quite well with my retro looking top that I've got on. Anyway, let's have a look at this bike. So this is a gravel bike which I was looking for for probably a good year or so and I finally, I finally found an absolute bargain. So get this, I paid £405 for that bike. 405 quid, that is it. It was reduced by 73% from 1600 and something and at that price, I just had to snap it up. And the best thing about that is, if I'm away sort of touring on it or doing anything that's sort of out and about and it did go, go missing, I'm not gonna cry too much about that compared to a, a bike that's worth sort of three or four grand. So it's absolutely perfect. And thus far, it has taken a good hammering with me, taking it on some really rough trails just to sort of see what it can take. And it's just like really, a 90s mountain bike which is what I'm used to riding anyways. So I've shoved on all my bike packing bags and I've crammed them full of everything we need hopefully to survive the night. So in the saddle bag we have got the tent, I've got a waterproof jacket and I've also got my sleeping mat which is the Ther uh, Thermarest Uberlite. Obviously that's tiny so it just fits in there nicely. I've got a little uh, sort of bag here, which has sort of remained fairly stable. I was quite happy with that really, because uh, on those gravel paths, it, things do shake around. And this is why I've sort of brought this out today, just so I can sort of test and make sure it's all gonna work okay on this bike. Anyway, in there, we have got my drone. 
In the frame bag here, we have got just all my sort of tools, torches, I've got uh, lamps, I've got um, bike kit, you know, if I get a puncture, I've got puncture repair kit, pump and things like that. We've got two water bottles there, which are full, so that should be enough water for us. Although I've been up onto the top there and there are some nice little puddles anyway, so I could, if I needed, drink out of those. The handlebar bag in the main section there, I've got my sleeping bag, I've got a down jacket and a set of dry clothes as well to put on. And then in this front one, which is a sort of second uh, bag that, that attaches to this one, in that I have got my sort of camera gear and a few snacks. And then the tent poles, if you can see, I've just had to sort of uh, strap onto the bottom of that. And luckily, I've got enough clearance there and it's not been sort of touching at all when that's been bouncing about on the wheel. And that's it, pretty simple really. There's, as I said, not much kit that I brought with me, but enough for us to survive the night and have a decent adventure. Anyway, let's get this tent up, eh? I am looking forward to squeezing it into there and showing you the new tent from Fjall Raven. little clips onto the poles and then we've got a little central pole here which uh, I think we just sort of slot through there and we'll clip that in and that just holds this up a little bit higher but there you go one freestanding tent so I can move that around wherever I want and as I say, if it wasn't going to rain tonight, I could just sleep in that as it is. Pretty awesome, eh? We've just got a couple of Velcro tabs here which just attach to the poles. And that just keeps the fly sheet in line really. And then at the bottom we have got just a very easy clip, colour coordinated, red to red. And then that just uh, tightens up with a bit of a pull on there. And then this side is black to black. Well, the tent is up, but it is getting a little bit nippy. So I'm just putting on my extra clothes. And once I get my down jacket on, I'll be a happy man. <laughs> Instantly, that is so much better. It has said that it's gonna drop down to about seven degrees tonight. So I do need to make sure I'm maintaining my body temperature. And currently, I've still got my little skinny legs out. Anyway, let's have a look at this tent. She is beautiful. I am very happy. Just looks so well. Anyway, this tent from Fjell Raven is called the Free Luft or Fry Luft or something. And it's a two person tent. And it is a three season tent designed for sort of more warmer weather use really. And the fact that it's inner pitch first means that you can just use the inner if you need, if it's gonna be perfect weather. And then you're almost sleeping outside under the stars. 
But if the weather is going to come in, obviously you can then put the fly sheet on and it will chuck off all the water as well. So it just gives you that option. They've designed it in such a way to be as good as possible for the condensation because condensation in tents is always an issue. So with this, they've got two sort of big openings under these flaps here, which just uh, allow airflow through. But also, as you can see here, We've got this lovely little curve here and that sort of curve is transferred all the way around so it just allows loads of airflow through that so hopefully reducing the amount of condensation and the fact that i've not even guided it all out properly she still looks well she's tight as a drum so it just shows you that it has been designed well and made well although as always i will absolutely hammer this tent in some horrible conditions just to see how far it can actually be taken so look forward to that eh but overall i am very happy with it she looks well she's got lovely space inside for two people and you can also just put a bit of a kit in the two little vestibules it's actually fully symmetrical as well so this side will open completely up which i'll do for you in a minute and you can obviously open the other side as well so it just again allows you to have that view and lots of airflow awesome <laughs> let's do it eh? There we go, that's just opened up one side. The other side opens up exactly the same. But as you can see, that just means you have got this open space now just to take in that view and just enjoy actually being outside rather than being sort of claustrophobic in a tent. That is ace, absolutely ace. Once I've fully used and abused this tent and I'll do more of a proper review of it, currently I'm just giving you a quick sort of look at it as I see it really because it's new to me as well. I have pitched it at home just to make sure it all works and that everything's there but apart from that it is literally a brand new tent and this is my first time in it. Anyway, we have got enough space here to fit two wide mats side by side so for two people it is absolutely spot on but I will say, if I just lie with my feet sort of towards that end, I've only got a couple of inches here, maybe three inches. So if you were, I'm, I'm six foot, so if you were six foot three or more, I don't think this will be the tent for you. I think you'll be squeezed into it, which is strange because it's a Swedish brand and I thought all the Swedish people were giants. So <laughs> anyway. The good thing about it is though, we've got plenty of headroom. That's me with a fully erect up spine and I've still got a few inches above my head. I'm not sat on a mat though, so that does make a difference. And also we've got near vertical sides as well, which obviously just makes it feel really sort of spacious and you don't have that sort of angle, which is sort of touching your sleeping bag or something like that. So that definitely helps. We have got about two thirds mesh I'd say on the sides all the way around and that just allows obviously that airflow so it just makes all the difference for keeping that condensation at bay. We've got an inner zip here at both sides which just allows access to open or close the vent on the outside so if the weather came in and you needed to shut it off then obviously you could do that from the inside which is great. What else? We've got a couple of little pockets up here, which are just to sort of put a light in or something along those lines. And it's got like a bit of a fold over on that. So it just captures anything. So if it was shaking around at night, you're not gonna have anything sort of fall off and onto you. Also, we've got a little bit of a drying line here or just a place just to put your torch, which is good. And then in all four corners, if you can see, we've just got a little uh, tag there as well. So if you wanted to add extra lines all the way around, you could. And then again, it just allows you to dry a few extra things out. We've got a vestibule at that side, which is big enough just to put your bag and boots in. 
and that is obviously mirrored on this side as well so it just gives you plenty sort of space generally with two man tents with two door openings like this or two vestibules I will put all my gear at one side and then I'll cook at the other side so it just gives you that bit sort of a freedom with it and also the fact that you can just open this completely up just makes all the difference really because then if the weather's uh, bad at one side you can open the other side or if it's a better view one side in the morning to get the sunrise and you can open that up blah 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 you know what I'm saying but that is what it's all about open it completely up and just taking in that view the thing I will say about this tent though straight away is the fact that that is 800 squid 800 quid for that that's just a hell of a lot of money I would say for a tent that's sort of designed for three season yes you do get the quality you know the, the brand in every single way is quality through and through and I know through my experience with their tents that it will take more weather than three season usually it'll just uh, take a good hammer in and it's nice to know you've got that sort of that arm around you looking after you in those conditions but for 800 quid it's quite a lot of money really because you could just go sort of spend a hundred pound on a tent and just pick good weather and just uh you know enjoy that so anyway as i say i'll give a proper review on it once i've given it a good hammering it's damn sexy though it is bloody sexy <laughs> I've been watching the sunset and it's beautiful but in like a real soft almost angelic way it's just so calming being up here and I've got my tent down in the bottom there hidden amongst these giant rocks and then just me here alone not a soul to be seen taking it all in Life is but a dream, sweetheart. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of a breeze coming through now, and I've got to say, I've messed up. I have messed up due to laziness. I got into my sleeping bag and then fell asleep for about three hours with the door wide open and it rained a little bit and luckily the rain didn't really bother me at all as in it's completely dry apart from on the outside where I've rolled up the sort of outer it's run down there and just towards that sort of pocket and bottom corner so there's a couple of things that are wet but nothing of importance so that'll teach me just for <laughs> falling asleep but i have slept for about three hours and i've woke up absolutely starving so now it is time to make some food so i have got a, a chicken jalfrezi with chickpeas and rice to eat there and because i am keeping it lightweight by being on the bike i've just got one of these which is the uh army ration pack heater it's a flameless heater so that just sits inside there with a little bit of water and with a chemical reaction will warm up my dinner so let's get this opened up and we'll get this on the way because it does take about 10 or 12 minutes to do so we're just gonna pop that straight inside there And all we do is add a little bit of water to activate the chemical process which is an exothermic reaction so squeeze a bit of that in just got to fill it up to a, a level inside i think that's about it not much water is needed and then we'll just give this a bit of a fold
shake it around. There we go. It's just starting to get warm now. Right, so I am gonna leave that to heat up for about 10 minutes. And then I'll see about just drying out this corner. There's a couple of bits I just need to sort, but <laughs> that'll teach me, eh? Fall asleep with door open and it rained. I'm just watching the vapour out of this bag just dancing this very light breeze that's passing at the minute. But it's working well and at the same time it's keeping my legs nice and warm. Right, we are ready. Let's get this opened up. Be a bit careful because it can be very hot. Well, it looks warm enough with that steam coming off. Pop that to one side. Open that up. Yes. Oh, throwing me fighting irons everywhere. Let's have a taste of this then. Jeez, that is hot. They do work well, those bags. Not bad at all. Sure what? <laughs> well, that's still giving off lots of heat and there's no moisture left in it. So I'm gonna pop that into my sleeping bag. That can just help keep me warm. I'm also eating a mini little saurine bar here, which is a lemon one. And they're quite tasty but I'm washing it down with water and that is just not a cup of Yorkshire tea is it but you have to make a few sacrifices when it comes to doing the bikepacking thing because obviously it's all got to fit on your bike so obviously taking a stove it's quite a chunk is that to fit on the bike somewhere so maybe I'll uh, I'll have to come up with a way to attach it to it somehow. I am thinking about maybe having like a fork bag or two attached to the forks and that just opens up a little bit more space because currently everything on that bike is shoehorned into it. So ideally I do need a little bit more space so I've got a bit more options I would say. But it has done exactly what I need it to do and that is just get me out to somewhere like this on a bit of a gravel path and obviously carry the essential kit that I need so I am happy with that and obviously all the bags and how it all works it's worth testing somewhere local just so you're not out on the road for a longer adventure finding that there's things are going to fail so it's a very good test for it and also it's good coming out and testing a new tent as well this has just been brilliant i think it's honestly a lovely tent so as a warm weather tent i don't think it's a bad shout really just the fact that you can pitch it without the fly sheet just means that you can feel more present and part of nature because you'll be able to look through all these mesh panels at the sunset and the twinkling stars so that will definitely be nice and you've also got the protection of the bug net all the way around as well so you're not going to get eaten by those nasties in the night but you could also in the middle of the day use it as a sunshade if you needed to escape the sunshine you could open these two doors up and just go to sleep and have a siesta which would be also very nice and even though it's not designed specifically as a bikepacking tent it does work pretty well as one because it is lightweight it packs pretty small 
It's free standing, which is a massive bonus, and it also pitches pretty quickly. So it's it's going to be definitely something I'm going to be using as my bike packing tent. The only issue with it is the fact that the pole length is slightly longer than what you get on a normal bike packing tent. Um, but there's ways around that. I'll just be able to strap the poles to the frame. And obviously, I'm out tonight, and it's not been an issue at all, just strapping them to that front bag. So it will definitely get some good use will this thing anyway it has been an absolute pleasure getting out for a decent adventure testing a bit of kit and even though i do have the most lovely home which is very comfortable i always prefer being in a tent i think i'm a bit weird anyway i'm gonna lay this log so we'll see you in the morning take care morning flowers well i'm absolutely knackered this morning and that is with a massive capital care i feel like i've got a face like a screwed up paper bag <laughs> and i feel i feel like my age that's what it is so normally i'm sort of quite bouncy and feel like a young kid but not today anyway the tent is completely dry as you would expect and it did rain quite a bit in the night Let's get out and have a look and see what's going on. The bike is there, which is a good sign. And it does look rather grey. So let's have a, a wander up through these rocks and see if we can take in that view and see what we have to deal with on the bike today. <laughs> this is awesome, this place. Look at that, we've got one little lone tree trying its best to survive and not get eaten by the sheep. Let's see if I can climb up here. I feel like I've got high heels on. <laughs> I've only done that a few times. <laughs> Well, it's windy. It's nice to get up high though, because then at least you get to see what is going on. And make a better judgment for the day for that. Oof. Oh. There we go. It is a windy one. Got a very little bit of sun there, just kissing on that hillside. But that is not bad at all. What a view. Ah. It's nice to be able to breathe and wake this body and face up. Ready to take on this day. Right, we're going to get back down and try to squeeze this kit back onto this bike. It will be quite tough, I think. Little bit of sunshine. It's always a good sign, isn't it? Anyway, I've got to get down here now. Speed is the best thing, I think. <laughs> oh dear, right. Let's get this bike and pack it fully with all this gear. And then we can skedaddle back home, eh?
Here comes the sun. Do 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 do. There we go. Look at that on cue. Oh wow. Just the heat off that is incredible. Anyway, we have packed everything away. The tent has gone. Leave no trace as always. And I have shoehorned it all back into that bike. And I'll tell you what, that bike does look beautiful. Look at that. That is not bad at all for 405 pounds. What an absolute bargain. Anyway, let's get ourselves skidaddled away from this place to somewhere a little bit warmer. Awesome, eh? Let's do it. It's a longer way to come back for camera when you're on bike. Whew. Anyway, just awesome. No other word for it. Get yourselves outside and enjoy a bit of this. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.